Hello and welcome to lecture 7. In this lecture, we'll see how to bind properties or a module that contains properties with a module that contains design. The best practices of system analog assertions uh, require, or at least I suggest, that do not put your properties in the same module as the design module. First of all, synthesis may have troubles. Your manager may not like that. Uh, practice and uh, most importantly there is a construct called bind available in system analog assertions so that you can keep your properties separate totally separate in a different module and then bind the properties module with the design module let's see how that works so binding properties let's say you have a module called design module with inputs DA, D clock, and output DB. I've used D for design, as you will see uh, the reason for that. And it's a very simple uh, assignment. Now, the now the second module is uh, your property module. This property module will have properties that work on this design in the design module. And the property module can only have inputs i mean it's a module so you can have anything you like but it doesn't make sense to have outputs from the property module it wants to work on the inputs uh, of the uh, uh, inputs that come from the design module so it has pa pb p, uh, p clock as inputs and it has a very simple property called rc1 which says if uh, PA is true, it implies PB. It doesn't matter. It's a very simple. Uh, and as you can see, the output of the design module, module DB goes as an input. But we haven't made the connection yet. I'm just showing you that the DB goes as an input PB. But we haven't done a bind yet. So this is where you do a bind. For example, you have a module called test bind property. And in this module, you you instantiate uh, the design module, DM, and you connect the design ports with the test bench ports, like we normally do. There's nothing new here. Now, here's a keyword, bind, which is a keyword from the SVA language. As a matter of fact, it exists in system analog also. But you can bind the design module with the property module give it an instance name and connect just like you would normally connect the Verilog uh, uh, modules or the instances. So PA, property module A connects to design A, PB connects to DB and P clocks connect to D clock. Now since we are connecting a module to a module, what that means is that bind the module with bind the module but all instances of the module because we are connect, uh, binding a module to a module as opposed to binding the instance of design module with the property module here all the design module instances will be tied to the property module here only the instance of the design module will be bound to the property module and again we connect the uh, uh, the ports which you have to so that way now in that case db is connected to pb as you see and that's why this uh, relationship i was showing here uh, as i just said you have to name uh, the bind instance and that's pretty much it it's actually a very straightforward process and with this process or this uh, feature in place, I don't see any reason why you may want to put properties within the design module. And uh, let's see uh, uh, a little bit more on this uh, topic. So what I'm showing here is that I have the uh, property module just like the previous slide. But here I'm calling the, the port DADBD clock. Doesn't matter, you can call it anything. But I'll tell you why I'm doing that. 
and the, there's a property which is the same as in the last slide and I'm asserting and covering the property. What I'm doing here is from within the property module as opposed to from a separate module, we had three modules here, design, property, and bind uh, module. But what I'm doing in this slide is that within the property module, I'm binding the design module. And here's a design module which has the names DA, DVD, clock, uh, as we saw in the previous. And I purposely named the property module uh, ports to be DA, DVD, clock, so that when you bind design module with property module you can simply say dot star because this is a very simple example but i can assure you you'll have hundreds of signals between the property module and the design module and one of the ways to make sure that you don't uh, make mistakes is call the property module ports the names of these ports to be the same as the design module so all you have to do is just put dot star um, for those uh, who wants to know even further detail of bind, this is the detail that I have presented is sufficient, more than sufficient for system error log assertions. But the, as I just said, the system error log language also can use this particular feature and you can uh, read the system error log LRM to get even further detail. But you don't need any further detail for the system error log assertions. Okay. So there's one more caveat here. Let's say here's my design module with the same ports as before, but I have internal registers. And I work on these internal registers as well as the input ports. But I basically want to write an assertion on the registers which are internal to the design module. They are not the ports. So how do I bind the internals of the design module with the property module? This is the same property module that we have said in the last two slides. It's called scope visibility. And this is an excellent feature uh, that the designers put in. Uh, very glad that they put in. And here's your test, the third module called bind property. And everything is the same. Uh, this one connects the ports to ports, like we have seen in the previous slides. Now, observe this one. Here, bind design module to the property module, give it the instance name. But what I'm doing is, here, the property module PA and PB, because there's a property that uses these two input ports, I'm connecting them directly to RDA and RDB. In other words, you don't have to drag RDA and RDB to external ports in order to bind those to the property module. I just imagine you may have thousands of internal variables. There, there is no way. I mean, first of all, synthesis will die if you had so many ports coming out. The design is not realistic because the design doesn't have all those ports. So the scope visibility means that everything under the design module, all the internals are available to the property module simply by connecting. You have to have those connecting ports in the property module, which is okay. Property module is not going to be synthesized. And all the internal registers are visible directly to the, uh, uh, when you do the bind. So understand this carefully. It's an excellent feature and uh, that will help you further to keep your properties separate from the design module. Now, <clears throat> as I said earlier, and in this course I have said that, let's say you are a VHDL design house, you use VHDL, but VHDL does not have a system error log uh, assertions. They don't support uh, Verilog, of course, it's VHDL. Uh, they do support PSL and you can uh, use uh, PSL to write assertions for VHDL, but system error log assertions, SVA, is becoming an industry standard. And uh, what if you want to use that? So let me show you how you do it. This is a VHDL quote-unquote module, or as it's called in VHDL world, entity. Here's your entity, CPU. It has two inputs, A and B, and here's the architecture of 
the entity CPU. This is how VHL works. If you're not familiar with VHL, don't worry. You don't need to become a guru. I'm just showing this for the VHL users. So here's your entity and architecture uh, for for a given quote unquote module like in Verilog. Now, system Verilog assertions work only in Verilog or system Verilog. So here's the CPU properties. Here's the entity CPU. Here's a Verilog system Verilog module CPU props, and there is some uh, assertion in there. How do you bind VHDL with Verilog? the same way that we have seen before. You create module, but in, in the VHL world, when you bind a VHL to Verilog, people say, hey, create a wrapper. Doesn't matter, it's the same concept that I just described to you before. Bind CPU, CPU is your entity in VHL world, like a module in Verilog world. Two CPU props, which is your properties module. Give it a name, CPU SVA bind and bind it just like you would do in a Verilog. D connects to A, E connects to B, and I, and here's a signal C that connects to F. So this is no different from what we saw in Verilog, 100% uh, Verilog world. So this is the beauty of SVA. You have a VSTL entity, you have a Verilog uh, properties module, and you can bind them pretty much the same way you bind uh, the Verilog design module with the Verilog assertions module. Now, how this works is very, very dependent on each simulator. So I have taken the example of Questa, which uh, allows uh, mixed mode uh, simulation between VHL and Verilog because you need that uh, after you bind VHL with Verilog. And basically, after you compile your design, you say vSIM top SVA wrapper. And this SVA wrapper uh, with your top level design uh, will be compiled and simulated. And because you are simulating the SVA wrapper, which is part of vlog star.v, uh, this bind will take place. Uh, that's all there is to it. I mean, you can have the entire VHDL design you can write all your uh, assertions in Verilog and you can bind them and you can compile. I'm sure uh, Questa is a, from Mentor. I'm sure the synopsis or cadence will have a different way of uh, compiling and elaborating this particular scenario. So again, here's, here's a simple uh, design, Verilog or VHDL modules or entities in VHDL world. Here's your test bench, Verilog. This is your existing. The point I'm trying to make here in this slide is let's say you have legacy design for which you never wrote assertions. Maybe SVA didn't even exist in those days. But you realize that you had found bugs, either in silicon, hopefully not, or during verification, and you had a tough time debugging, and there's a good chance you missed a few bugs. Now if you want to write assertions. So again, just like I showed you in previous slides, write the assertions, properties, and bind them. That's it. The existing design doesn't have to change. Nothing happens to the existing design for two different modules. And you can also write, in addition to uh, the uh, module assertions, uh, interface uh, assertion. The uh, interfaces assertions uh, between two modules and at the I.O. of the chip. These interface assertions, just, just as a side note, are probably some of the most useful assertions you will write because this is where the protocols take place. Some of these are standard protocols at the chip uh, boundary, but the internal, intermodule uh, assertions are all specific to the design, and those need to be verified. And uh, so where do you put these interface assertions? Here, the module assertions, we are binding them. And I'm taking a very simple approach here. Uh, you can experiment with different styles, but basically I'm saying that put the interface assertions in an include file with hierarchical referencing of the interface signals, and voila, you go, and that will, that will work. 
And this is the last point that if you are using system error log, you can embed the system uh, interface assertions into the so-called interface block, which is part of system error log. So you can t have an existing design, a legacy design, and you can still take full advantage of the uh, assertions methodology. So that's pretty much it for this uh, lecture. You have seen how Verilog and or VHL designs can be bound uh, to a properties uh, module, how you can keep the properties module separate from the design module, which is the methodology I highly recommend. Thanks a lot for attending this lecture and I'll see you in the next lecture.